Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Morning Devotions. I'm glad to be here with you today in a very special way because we're getting ready to get into uh, Matthew chapter 24 and 25, which are some humdingers. Um, I don't, um, true confession, I don't promise to be a, a prophet necessarily. I don't promise to be an end times expert. I don't know that any of us is, <laughs> although a lot of people claim to be. There are some, though, who are pretty good guides to get and glean a lot from. I, I don't mind shouting out that I think the guys over at FAI, that's Frontier Alliance International, um, um, Joel Richardson and the founder, his name now escapes me. I don't know why, but I encourage you to go and download their app and uh, listen to some of their studies. Joel also has his own I think called Joel's Trumpet. He's written a lot of books. Um, there's some other people that I've really pay attention to, but uh, and so certainly a lot of what I'll tell you in chapter 24. It's going to take us several days, I'm sure, to get through chapter 24. Is um, you know a lot of these thoughts. There's no way that some of what's in me has not gotten into me due to other teachers. Um, some that are very more familiar and trendy, I haven't paid a lot of attention to. Everybody certainly has something to say, but a lot of these thoughts are also my own. As um, my experience um, in as a pastor many years ago was, uh, I kind of I think got accused of being a, a doomsday prophet somewhat. Sometimes um, I have always felt, especially in the last, you know. 25 30 years that something's rotten in Denmark you know that's something I know those of you who are uh, spiritual we're all spiritual beings whether we realize it or not we're spiritual beings with a physical body not physical beings with a spiritual um, aspect to us so that's something to think about but um, I've, I've been feeling these birth pains uh, for a while myself um, because of um, you know, I, I was a man of the world too, so I lived hard and heavy out in the world. So I know all about that, but I also have sought the Lord for a long, long time since then. And um, it's caused me to really feel ill at some of the things that I've witnessed that I didn't know were possible. Now, quite part of that is quite possibly because I'm getting to be an old man, 58 in August. So uh, we'll take that into consideration too. I'll let you be the judge as we go through. So that's a lot of introduction. I know I could probably say a lot more, honestly, uh, because this is really where I feel right now. In fact, um, uh, I preached uh, a message back several months back um, called The Road Still Less Traveled when we were on the in the midst of and on the precipice of actually having a uh, almost worldwide mandate uh, and in our country that a lot of people were caught sleeping as if it was no big deal for a vaccine as if as if that was just kind of trivial to even think that way um, and I really shared a lot of things that I was feeling at that time I was caught up in the midst of the possibility of not taking the vaccine because I was um, I had a conviction personally about it and being that I supposedly lived in a country that was free and could make that choice for myself, and that for doctors who would see me would recognize that they're not God, that they are very helpful in some ways. They can they can sew you up and fix you in some ways, but that um, I indeed was their customer, and so therefore I would be making the decision as to whether or not I did those things based on sifting through a whole lot of information. Honestly, primarily this so-called outdated book. Um, but also reading and understanding. But I will have to say, and I don't get any points for this, maybe I'll just give the points to myself, is that my wife and I, from the first week that the pandemic, scandemic, scandemic, um, 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 pandemic, whatever you want to call it, came, and, and that is not to take away from anybody that, that passed away from that and, and a lot of other things. So don't don't get mixed up in all that, what I'm trying to say. But probably the first week in of the so-called two weeks. <laughs> Remember the two weeks? 
that uh, lasted uh, about a couple of years and is still threatening to rear its ugly head. If you're not paying attention, pay attention. If it ain't, if it ain't COVID, it'll be something else. It's brewing. They're getting it ready. Trust me on this. I hope if you read this book, and that's what Matthew 24 is going to be about. And I know this is a lot of introduction, but this is this is what we're getting ready to get into is not just what the Bible says about this, and it says it throughout, okay, really from Genesis to Revelation, quite frankly. Um, and I am not a red-letter Christian, meaning that only what Jesus says matters. It matters a whole hell of a lot. But the fact that Jesus, this is Jesus teaching on eschatology, and that he's the closest to the Father, that the Word says he's the only one who knows then I think we need to pay it very attention. So this is serious. And if you come away with this time and morning devotions and not feeling that somewhat with me, I say this to you in love. His grace is enough to test your test your spirit, test your heart, um, and, and ask yourself whether or not you're, you're still too enamored with the world and you're still too preoccupied in the natural realm and not enough in the spiritual realm. Listen, I know it's easy to do because we all got to have stuff. It's getting harder and harder to have stuff. So I just filled up my gas tank uh, um, and about, uh, I guess, a year ago, uh, uh, two years ago almost now, it was, uh, I think it cost me about $30 to fill it up and it's 65 now. So at the sound of my voice, people are, you know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to wax too political at times if I feel it's appropriate. I will. I, I'm pretty sure you know where I'm at just by the, some of the things that I'm saying. But what I'm really trying to do is encourage you, okay, to to be more perceptive and to be more to be less distracted by the world's trappings and a little more distracted by what this book says and by the spirit of discernment that I believe he gives to all believers. Now, some of us, I think I have a little, um, you know, there's two kinds of prophets. There's prophets who are foretellers. I think we have a lot of people who think those are those people, and I disagree. I think I think there are definitely prophets like that who foretell uh, the future and can be very accurate. And But they're much fewer <laughs> than all the people you see on YouTube. So... But there are some, and I've, I recognize this fully. There's also this, this sense of prophecy in which we are foretelling the truth. Um, you know, uh, the Bible says that the sons of Issachar understood the times and knew what they should do, what the people of Israel should do. That's really a powerful, powerful, powerful thing to reflect on. And guess what I would ask you is, you know, are you as a... Um, as a uh, a follower of Jesus? Are you do you have some sons of Issachar qualities about you? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, I think it's something that you really, really, really need to wrestle with. I, for one, and I know we're probably not even going to get into chapter twenty-four now because I'm just prepping you for it because my heart is heavy as I even as I even uh, talk about it um, because I've been feeling it for a long, long long, long time. And quite frankly, many of uh, my friends and family, you know, uh, probably think I'm a, a little weird because, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, you know, I'm just not trying to be the wrong kind of sheep. You know what I'm saying? And I think as, as, as the Bible uh, calls us sheep um, in terms of really being needy uh, with the Lord in, in our life and that he needs to guide us, that's a different kind of sheep. But being a being a sheep this dumb as a box of rocks and can't um, can't figure out uh, his way out of a wet paper bag is not something that God's people are supposed to be about. And honestly, I got to say that this the church totally, totally failed this test. Some of the most prominent and some very, up until then, faithful followers of Jesus came down on the wrong side of this. I haven't heard many say yet, and I could have missed it, so you can correct me in the comments, that they did miss it, and uh, in what way that they missed it. People, I think, will still you know, go with whatever. They'll go along to get along, 
and whatever you know they most the most of <laughs> American Christianity my 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 take on it has been that most of American Christianity is we're pretty much like we you know practical atheists we pretty much go along with everything everybody else does we got all the insurance plans we got this we got that we're protected we're ready for everything anything we're prepping we're doing the whole nine yards um hey listen all I know is that let this word be true and everything else a lie. Now, that's my stance as a Christian. If you're an unbeliever, which I pray tell that there's many of you that would watch this crazy channel and and um, maybe you're, you don't even know the Lord, but you're just, I don't know why you're paying attention to me at all. Maybe there's something about I'm saying that you're at least curious. I hope so. Because my goal has always been that you know to be a person that could um, guide people who are not on the path to at least relook at the path. Because you know Christianity is 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 has been around for a little while now, and we've gotten a lot of things right, but we've gotten a lot of things wrong. So we've got some work to do, especially now. I, but I got, I got to get back to the fact that the church really failed this test. People that I've really respected. Now I want to give us, you know, uh, you know, my own church that I was attending for a couple of years and that I preached at. Um, um, you know, they stood their ground and still kept their church doors uh, open because we lived in a in a state, thank God, that had not gone totally uh, buck crazy. But of course, we we've had some uh, some uh, leaders in our state that. They were just doing what everybody else was doing too. They want to be on the right side of it, you know. And they, they, the right side for them is whatever everybody else is doing and what they're saying to keep everybody happy and get that next election. So, I mean, I know that's some political stuff, but listen, the Bible is a highly political book. So, if you think that if you are the philosophy that the Bible does not speak to things politically, you ain't read this book. You haven't read the book. Okay, it's kind of like somebody hint, hint in recent days, you know what I mean, um, um, talking about another person's uh, film that they put out to, to talk about some things that the the mainstream uh, media thinks is silly, you know, but may not have even actually you know seen the film and investigated the data. I would encourage you to investigate the data of this book, sifted through the Spirit of God in your life. And that you, you not let. Um, don't be gullible. Stop being gullible. You're you're not. Listen. What we're gonna uh, what we're gonna uncover. Hopefully, hopefully for most of us, you know, we're not gonna uncover it because we're gonna we're gonna have been here before. But those of you who haven't, that's okay. Listen. Pay attention because Jesus is telling us what the deal is gonna be like. He's not gonna give us the final answer, but he's gonna give us a whole lot of hints. Okay. Some hints are things that have already happened, have already taken place. They're continuing to take place. They're escalating. But I will tell you that if you're a Christian, if you don't, if you, if you do not feel something in the air, and the real battle, as we'll discover here too, is going on in the heavenly realms. Okay, but there are people that are doing that bidding in the earthly realm here who are the people who are supposed to be the ones to take care of you and sew you up whenever you need to be sewn up and give you medicine when you need to be given medicine, the right medicine, and not sabotaging other forms uh, for you to get the same kind of healing, just like people who would, who would there's even a move to, to get rid of, you know, a lot of the vitamins and things we are because they're just, they're not, they're not proven, the FDA hasn't approved. Don't get me started on that. Okay, just do not get me started on that. Um, but I will tell you that um, we're in a very difficult time. There are players on the block, like I just mentioned, that are supposed to take care of you. Your leaders that are supposed to represent you. No taxation without representation. Okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you fill in the bite. Your spiritual leaders, blind gods. Does that word sound familiar in Matthew? Blind gods? Well, that's what we're left with. And so a lot of us, people like you and I, who are still saying something about it, we look like, yeah, we look like the conspiracy theorists, man. 
You know what, though? Conspiracy theories used to be just that, but guess what? Perhaps the conspiracy theorists are right. Now, I'll leave that to you. But the waters were getting ready to go. On, and these are written primarily to Israel. Okay? It's for us too. Don't get me wrong. But he has Israel in sight because his disciples are getting ready to ask him some pointed questions based on the setting where they're at. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we go into the weekend. I don't know if I'll get back to you on Sunday, but I, I hope that uh, you're going to get a little bit of, of Mark Prince raw and that that's okay with you. Um, you know, feel free to make comments. You know, be kind, but you can disagree. But I'm telling you, I, as I've told people, and I've I've shared with my sons my whole life, and and I'm nobody. I don't. My name's not in lights anywhere. There's nobody. You know, saying Mark Mark Prince is you know the next this or that. There's a few people in the world that think I'm a pretty good guy, and I'm praise God for those, and I hope I live up to that. But, um, you know, you're going to get a lot of what I have been feeling, which is, uh, I would like to say, is my wheelhouse. Not that I'm a prophecy scholar, but that I've felt these things acutely in my life for a long, long time. And as, as things have progressed in the last two years, there's a lot of things out there that are, you know, are not conspiracy theorists are not conspiracy theories but there's something that you really need to pay attention to wake up wake the frick up all of us it's to me it's to you i say it in love wake up today is the day of salvation pay attention to this so-called outdated fossilized book okay and take a walk with me in the next, I guess, it's going to take a little while to get through chapter 24 and 25. I pray the Lord is with me. And I pray that you'll gain something from this. I'm not trying to be a shock jock. I'm not trying to be cute. And that's probably going to be kind of hard to do now anyway. At my age, I'm trying to say something real. I'm trying to say something that not only do I feel, not only that I have studied long and hard about, but also something that I've just felt for a long time. And so I'm going to let you into a little bit of my madness. Anyway, God bless you. We didn't even get into chapter 24 today, so that ought to tell you something. I could say a lot more in the introduction. I may do it again tomorrow. I just hope the Lord really just guides us in this and, and that you receive something from it. So pay attention. Stay tuned. Tomorrow I'll get back out you. I love you. Most of all, Jesus loves you. He'll never let you down. Look in to Jesus today.